the free clad spender ready to spin to the limit and then go head over heels in debt. Love. Can I hit one without hitting two and leave the one lost and broken? Yes, love. I said love. Is it a mouse? And you put it in your pocket and you take it to your room and you bring it out of your pocket and you say, oh, here's my little love, my little mousey love. Could love be a mouse? Or is love an elephant? <laughs> and you step out of the way where the elephant comes tromping, traveling, tramping with big feet, long flaps and droopy ears and ivory tusk. And you step out of the way with respect and you say, my love, he's big, big like Super Colossal is big. Heavy and elephantine and funny, immense and slow and easy. The love be an elephant, or is love a snake? Mm. Say like a winding, slithering rattlesnake with fangs, poison fangs, so they tell you. And when the bite of it gets you, then you run crying for help if you don't fall cold and dead on the way. The love be a snake? Or would you say love is a flamingo with pink feathers, a soft sunset? streaming pink and with enough long feathers you can gather them into a fan and tell your lover speak my chosen one speak to me and tell me of your love could love be a flamingo or could love be an apple and you don't know whether to bite into it and you knock on wood and you call off your left members and you put your teeth into it and you taste it and whether it's sweet and wild or dry mush you want to spit out, it's something else than you expected. Could love be an apple? <laughs> Maybe it's goofer dust. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. When you go to the goofer tree at midnight and you get in the leaves and you crush them into a dust and you sprinkle them in your man's shoes and while he's sleeping you sprinkle them all and <laughs> Could it be that? And are they after beguiling and befoozling us when they tell us that love is a rose, a red, red rose, and you can wear it as a corsage in your hair and your teeth, and you can waltz and rumble wearing your sweet crimson rose, and you can take it home to your windowsill and put it there and see it wither brown and curl black and swivel to one day you're not careful that it crackles to dust in your hand. And the wind whisk it, whether you care not, whether you don't give one solitary damn where it's gone. But with just one more flame of a rose, did the best it could with what it had. Nobody wins, nobody loses. What's one more rose? And on bright summer evenings, you can see them with bunches of roses and their arms outstretched to you. Roses today, sweet roses. Your lady would like a rose. Then there are those who say that love is a little white bird. You can't see it, and you only know it's there by the faint whir of its wings and the song it sings. And you like to sing it, but you don't dare try, because the little bird can sing it better than you can. So you listen and you pray and you listen some more and one day, <laughs> it's as though a great slow wind had washed you clean and strong, inside and out. And you can hear the bird's hush song. Nothing can harm you. And the days to come can weave in and weave out. And nothing can harm you. Unless you turn yourself into a thing for mm. <laughs> Nothing can harm you. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the little white bird. That's my candidate. You can't see it, but you can hear it. And when you hear it, you know that's love. It's a hush song. And I can have a shop clerk come up to me and say, you do something swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. And I say, I do. And no thanks to you. And if he brings in a stack of affidavits and says that, I'll swear to it, so help me God. So I give you the little white bird. And my thanks for your hearing me. And my 
pray for you. 